Hi, this is Derek the Nitwit, and thanks for coming to check out my video. Welcome to all the people who are just dropping in, and welcome back to all my subscribers. So, this is just today's update. Um, my new project, I've been crocheting for quite a bit. So, I switched back to knitting. Um, so, my current project is, I've gone back to this blanket that I can back up enough where you can see it. Um, it would have been better as a solid collar where you could actually see the, it's more of a, a 3D pattern, you know, with the, the way you knit and purl than as opposed to just like a, a color print pattern. Um, I have just, I, I have gone from, it's a six, it's a 16 line repeating pattern. I started at line 14 or not line 15 and I made it to line two. But I've had to go back so many times, and I think, then I ended up dropping a stitch. So I get to back up further, you know, get to tink further than I actually progressed. But, you know, uh, it's, it's practice, is what I always tell my sister when she has to back up. So that's what I'm working on that. I did finish the, the bunny, the amigurumi bunny that I showed everyone. And I have a picture of it. I don't have it with me, but I have a, I have a picture that I'll add at the end of the video. Um, I did give it to David that he's going to, you know, give it to his mom. Um, she recently lost her pet that she'd had, for, her, her pet dog that she'd had for a while. So, you know, gave her the bunny so that maybe, you know, she's not going to replace her dog, but at least maybe it'll make her smile. And... I'm sure a lot of you have heard. I, I want another giveaway. This one's from Cindy. I think it's Malter. Melter. I'm not sure. I'll post a link to her channel and in the description. Go check her out. She's only got 148 subscribers, but she's already done one giveaway. She's already planning her next one. So definitely, you know, she's got a lot of, you know, interesting things on her channel. So definitely, you know, go check her out. And when I do receive the, um, the package from that, I'll definitely open that on camera. And see if you can see real quick my my whip mystery or my my whip tree. Um, I'm down to pretty much no short projects left. I we have the junk blanket that I only work on. Um, I used to work on it on public when I was waiting for the bus or doctor's office and whatnot. But it's getting big enough now that I don't. Um, I don't really like it's getting too big to haul out. So I'm not sure what I'll do with that. You know, I work on it a little bit at home. Um, I have been thinking of other things that I could be doing with it. We have that, you know, we have the junk hats for the smaller bits of yarn that's left over from projects. We have the, um, the taste, the bag of day ta um, taste of taste of the rainbow. It's a scarf pattern, but I've, you know, adapted it, just made it wider enough to be a blanket. I've got that that I'm working on, but I don't work on, you know, that one is actually the one I've been taking out on the bus with me just because I don't have to follow, I don't have to look at the written pattern anymore because I've got it pretty much memorized. Um, so I take that one out with me. Of course, you know, we, we have the, the tink blanket right now. We've got the latch hook rug kit um, and the luminate blanket. And then we also have the coasters that, when I went to the crochet course last Monday, that, yeah, I mean, I... A lot of times going to these classes, it makes me have to actually leave the house because I don't like to, I don't always like to go out to the house, out of the house. I don't always like interacting with people. So it forces me to, um, or it doesn't force me to, but it entices me to. And I, um, but then, then sometimes, you know, I learn techniques that it's, you know, I could learn from you too, but sometimes it's a lot easier when you can sit there and have someone point and say, no, you know, you're going for this hook or, you know, you're going for this loop right here, or you're doing, you know, you can actually have someone interactive with you while you're learning it. But we're learning spiral and coasters. And the pattern is not that well written, but we did get it figured out. And it's actually where I can um, kind of do it almost by sight at this point, you know, without needing to follow the pattern. But there's that, and those aren't super important, but it's more just something I need to practice in that. And the scarf for the um my little internet friend in mexico not one that 
I don't know what part of Mexico he's in, so I, you know, I'm not going to be seeing him when I go on vacation. Um, but we're up to that, so I like it. And I mean, it is, it's, I am using cotton yarn for this one. Um, it is the Mirafil Bella Cotton. And I, I just chose the cotton because one, it's, it shows the stitch nicely, but also, you know, he's not going to want a wool co a wool scarf in, you know, it, I mean, I know that there are, are cooler places in Mexico, but for the most part, you're not going to want a wool scarf there. So, um, I'm not really starting any small projects now until I get back from vacation. So, this is why I've got these long haul projects. I did get these tags. Let's see if I can get it to focus on them. Well, handmade tags. They're wooden. Um, I got 50 of them for $2.31 on Amazon. And I'll post the link to them um, in the description. Now, it's not an affiliate link. I don't make any money off that. It is, I know you, I'm sure, I'm not sure if you are, Amazon has a, the Smile program where um, certain percentages of purchases go towards um, different charities and I have my Amazon set up to automatically default to go into to the smile.amazon.com just so that um, the charities can actually receive that little bit of um, you know money coming in for purchases that I make it doesn't raise the cost of the purchases and I'm not making any money off of it so but you will it may you know you may notice that it takes you to smile.amazon.com instead of just straight to amazon.com um, as far as, let's see, the oh, neighbor drama, I'm sure y'all are all one update on it, they're back. Um, the lady's there, I see the kids there. Um, yesterday I went to take the trash out in the morning and there was this huge purse in the trash can. Zipped up, looked nice, and actually my, my first thought was someone stole a purse and they just dumped it. And like they stole, the, they stole a purse, took the money, and they're just dumping it. And so I brought it in because I was going to go look, you know, look in the purse to find like an ID, something in there that maybe I could find who it belonged to or find a way to get it back to them or at least, you know, information to where, you know, call the cops, you know, to say, hey, here's this, you know, so that they can get it back to the owner. And not even five minutes after I brought it in, um, neighbor knocked on the door I guess it was her, the neighbor's girlfriend whatever she is knocked on the door it was hers she had only been planning on being at the house you know just quick in and out so for whatever reason instead of taking her purse with her she decided it would be safer to store in the trash can so found the owner to the purse um but yeah that's a fun situation there so we've got the Mexico countdown at the time of the recording. I've got five days and 15 hours until my flight. The, we go to take the cats to the vet tomorrow for their um, travel certificate to Mexico. To go into Mexico, you know, they have to have been seen by a vet within the 10 days preceding the flight or the, the entry. They have to show proof of vaccination, which cats are up to date on their shots. And then they have to show that they have been um, treated for... Sorry, um, little miss is chirping at something. Um, they've been treated for like parasites, you know, worms, fleas, ticks, stuff like that. And so we'll take them to that. And then that travel certificate's almost $100. So that's not cheap. But thankfully, we don't have to have a travel certificate coming back into the U.S. So... And Saturday, I'm taking my, my sister. We're going out to her house out in... Um, in Wolf going to pick up some baggage, some luggage so that you know I have a suitcase to go to Mexico with and then we're getting a load of the stuff that she wants to keep and wants to get out of the house so we can load up and bring back to the city and I've been starting the packing process I've just you know so far I have snacks for the flight I've got my little waterproof pouch that my cell phone goes in for when we're out um, on a boat or you know out at the beach or whatnot um, and I've found and printed some patterns both knitting and crocheting patterns that I can do in Mexico because when I'm down there I plan on finding some uh, good yarn you know local yarn hopefully and then let's see now 
last off, so I've got a little story for y'all guys. She's talking about my sister's house in Wolf. She has three ponds in her backyard, and they're kind of interconnected. There's beaver dams that occasionally get up and block the um, the, the little waterfalls between the. Um, sorry, my alarm is going off. Between you know each pond, and. When she first moved out there, it got bad enough that she actually had to contact the state and they had someone that they contracted to come out and trap the beaver. And, of course, once they're trapped, you know, they're, you know, they kill the beavers and whatnot, but they leave them behind for the the property owner, the homeowner. So a lot of people, you know, they either want the meat or the, the pelts, whatnot. My sister didn't. And, you know, so I was working at a prison as a... Um, prison guard at the time so my sister tells me you know asks you know so tells me to ask you know, my co-workers if they want it you know why waste it let someone wants to eat it or, or use the fur or whatnot you know good day and um, so me in my you know speak before I think go into work the prison you know we're sitting we always have a pre-shift briefing so I'm sitting there before the briefing gets started, or right at the end of the briefing, the um, captain asks if anyone has anything to say, and I'm like, you know, well, hey, you know, I'm just kind of an announcement. I'm like, my sister wants to know if anyone wants to eat her beaver meat or have her beaver fur. And cue the riotous laughter from everyone, and then I clued into what I just said. So, yeah, thanks, sister. But that wasn't the funny part that I wanted to tell you. One time I went out there, this is in February, uh, not this year, no, obviously not this year, but not anytime soon. I mean, this was like 2010. So I got out there, and I had been out to visit a couple of times, but I'd never actually gone out to the bottom. I mean, like, she's got this huge pond in her backyard. So, or kind of at the bottom of her backyard. But I'd never actually gone down to the water. And I woke up in the morning and I woke up before you know before she did and I was tired of trying to be quiet and I'll wake her up and so I was like okay well I'm just gonna go outside and, and kind of look around and I'm gonna um I'll go down to the pond and look and it's it was kind of a warm enough weather you know I had on flip-flops so I go all the way down to the um, to the pond and I'm not worried about beavers because I'm thinking okay they hibernate don't they you know it shouldn't be a problem so I get down there and I'm just kind of I'm at the edge of the water and I'm kind of like you know throwing rocks into the water because you know that's what you do and I hear this rustling off to the side so I look over and I see the grass moving because you know tall grass went on and I just kind of watching it trying to figure out what it is and you know how long do I have before I need to freak out because I'm going to freak out and I just see this huge giant rat looking thing you know snout come poking out and so I start taking a step back, and it starts, you know, it takes a couple steps towards me, and I take a couple steps back, and then it goes, it's this freaking beaver. Apparently, they don't hibernate. They are a bit nocturnal, but they don't hibernate. And me throwing rocks. Okay, apparently, it disturbed it enough that it had to come check what was going on. So, I'm backing up, and every time I take a couple steps back, this beaver looks at me and takes a couple steps towards me and I back up faster, you know, the faster I back up, the faster it moves towards me until I turn tail and ran, you know, I mean, it's muddy. I stepped in mud, left a flip flop behind. It's still out there somewhere. I hightailed it back to the house. I got chased by a beaver. So, that was my first experience with wild things out of her house. So, anyway make this video is going to be long enough um, don't forget to go check out Cindy's channel and um, if you like the video go ahead and like it if you're not subscribed I would appreciate if you subscribe it and hit that bell and I will see you guys again soon